everyone. This is part one of the chapter two lecture series on the classified balance sheet. Let's get started. When preparing the balance sheet in chapter one, we didn't really talk about the order of assets or the order of liabilities. All we cared about was getting the assets in the asset section and the liabilities in the liability section. In chapter two, we are going to learn the appropriate ordering of assets and the appropriate ordering of liabilities. We will break our assets and liabilities down into classifications. This new form of balance sheet presentation is called the classified balance sheet. The reason why we want to group similar assets together and similar liabilities together is to help users better understand the assets and liabilities of the company. The typical classifications are listed here. As you can see, there are four typical classifications for assets. We have current assets, long-term investments, property plan and equipment, and intangible assets. The two most common asset classifications are current assets and property plan and equipment. You'll see those in all of your problems. Long-term investments and intangible assets are less common, so you won't necessarily see those in all of your problems. The standard classifications for liabilities are current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And then we'll have the stockholders equity section like we saw in chapter one. Okay, let's begin our discussion with current assets. I have provided the definition in your notes. Current assets are assets that a company expects to convert to cash or use within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Our focus is the one year criterion as this is the most commonly used in practice. So for our purposes, a current asset is an asset that we expect to use or convert to cash within one year. Once you identify your current assets, you must then determine what order to list them. Current assets should be listed in order of liquidity, meaning they should be listed in the order in which they are expected to be converted into cash. You should list the most liquid first, which would be cash because it's already cash, and you would list down to the least liquid. The second major classification of assets is long-term investments. There are two common types of long-term investments. First, a, a company may choose to invest in the stocks and bonds of other entities. If they expect to hold such an investment for more than a year, then the investment would be considered a long-term investment and therefore would go in the long-term investments section. If they expect to hold such an investment for less than a year, then it would be considered a current asset and it would therefore go in the current asset section. The second type of long-term investment is an investment in a long-term asset that is not currently being used in the operations of the business. If this type of asset is used in the operations of the business, then it would be considered property, plan, and equipment, which is our third major asset classification. Property, plan, and equipment is often called PP&E, fixed assets, and plant assets. So you need to be comfortable with all four terms. An asset must meet three criteria in order to be considered PP&E. First, the asset must be tangible, meaning touchable. Second, the asset must have a long useful life, meaning that the asset will be used beyond the current accounting period. And lastly, as I mentioned previously, the asset must be used in the operations of the business. The cost of all fixed assets except for land is expensed over their estimated useful lives through what's called depreciation. Depreciation expense is the portion of our fixed assets cost that is being expensed in the current period. The total amount of depreciation taken on an asset thus far in its life is called accumulated depreciation. This account is listed on the balance sheet and is netted against the cost of the applicable asset. We will talk much more about fixed assets in future chapters. Right now, you just need to be comfortable with the financial statement presentation of them. The third asset classification is intangible assets. The major distinguishing factor of an intangible asset is that it lacks physical substance. It is something that provides a benefit to the company, like all assets, but it is not touchable. This completes the asset section of the balance sheet. So let's move on to the liability section. Fortunately for you, the liability section is not as involved as the asset section. We only have two classifications to learn. The first is current liabilities. Remember liabilities in general are obligations of the company. 
current liabilities are obligations that we must fulfill within the coming year. If you have a short-term notes payable, you normally would list it first, followed by accounts payable. The remaining current liabilities would normally be listed in order of magnitude, meaning largest to smallest. The second classification of liabilities is long-term liabilities. These liabilities are obligations that do not have to be satisfied in the coming year. Okay, and that concludes the liability section of the classified balance sheet. Our final section is the stockholders equity section. This section will be identical to what you learned in chapter 1. We will not learn anything new about the stockholders equity section until chapter 11. Now let's look at an example. We will look at the classified balance sheet for Franklin Corporation. Let's start with the assets section. The first classification of assets is current assets. We list these in order of liquidity beginning with cash. We then have our long-term investments including stock investments and investment in real estate. We then have our property, plant, and equipment. As you can see, we list our property, plant, and equipment at cost and then we net the associated accumulated depreciation against the cost to report the net book value or the undepreciated cost of our fixed assets. Finally, we list our intangible assets. We only have one in this example, which is patents. We then move on to our liabilities and stockholders equity section, beginning with our current liabilities. We list notes payable first and then accounts payable. We then move on to our long-term liabilities. As you can see, Franklin has both short-term and long-term notes payable. So watch out for that in your problems. If the problem doesn't say whether the note payable is long-term or short-term, you should assume it is short-term. Finally, we have the stockholders equity section that looks just like the stockholders equity section that we learned in chapter one. This completes part one of the chapter two lecture series. Have a great day.